Hi everyone, this is lesson 3C, logarithmic functions. Today we're going to be introducing what a logarithm is. This is Mrs. Campbell speaking. Please begin by putting the date in the appropriate spot. And remember that you'll be submitting both your notes and your homework. So today we're going to define what a logarithm is. And we start by thinking about exponential functions. So y equals b to the x is an exponential function. It's the parent function, in fact. And we know that we can look at them in two different ways, one from the perspective of growth and one for decay. And it's really essentially the same thing. Today, I'm just going to draw the growth model in. So this is what y equals b to the x looks like. And today, our focus is going to be on its inverse. Now, I'll bet you remember from our previous lesson what the inverse looks like. So what we did with the inverse is we said, well, I can just put in this line, y equals x, which I just did. We could make a table of values, but I think just eyeballing it is going to be good enough for what we're doing right now. The inverse is going to look something like this. It is a function. As you can tell, it's going to pass the vertical line test, and our job today is going to be to write its equation. So using the switch and solve method that we learned yesterday, we would say that if y equals b to the x is the function we're interested in, its inverse is x equals b to the y. And as we said yesterday, then comes the and solve part. To solve this equation, x equals b to the y, we would have to somehow get y out of the exponent. So how do we do that? Well, some people might say, take the y root of both sides. Please don't write this down. Let me just show you what happens if you do, though. If you take the y root of the left-hand side and the y root of the right-hand side, what you do is you end up solving it for b. But did you solve it for y? You didn't. So that doesn't actually do the trick. So I'm going to erase that because that was not super helpful at all. And instead, I have to come up with a way to solve it for y. And that way is something called a logarithm. A logarithm is just a word that is used to tell us that we're looking to solve for an exponent. And so in this case, we would say, oops, let me get back to my pen, the log with a base of b of x is equal to y. And you can see that now it is, in fact, solved for y. And that is the equation of the graph that we have drawn here in green. In our lesson today, our big focus is going to be in going back and forth between two forms, what we'll call the exponential form and the logarithmic form, just to become familiar with logarithms and then using logarithms to find um, certain values and so really today it's just all about getting to know and getting comfortable with this thing called a logarithm. Some people think they're hard because it's a weird word. Um, it's not. It's not really a big deal. We just have to get really comfortable with going back and forth between the two. So in saying that in the box at the beginning, it says here y equals log base b of x means exactly the same thing as b to the y equals x. We just have these in different forms. This form that I have on the left-hand side is what we refer to as log form. And the one on the right is what we refer to, refer to as exponential form. And honestly, sometimes I like one form over the other. Sometimes I like the log form. Sometimes I like the exponential form. And what we need to do is just get really good at going back and forth between the two. So, in other words, y equals b to the x and log y equals log base b of x those are inverse functions, and that's what we began with today in the graph. So y equals b to the x is the blue graph that I have, and y equals log base b of x is the green graph that I have. Those are inverse functions. Now, in, again, in our goal today, we're going to be really practicing going back and forth between two different forms, but it turns out that some logarithms are more important than others. There are logarithms called common logs, and there are logarithms called natural logs. Those two are the most popular logarithms. In fact, if you were to look at your calculator right now, assuming you have a graphing calculator, you're going to see two buttons for logarithms. One says LOG. That is called the common log button. And the other one is LN, and that is called the natural log button. So a common logarithm, what exactly is it? It is a base 10 logarithm. Base 10 logarithms 
are super popular, more popular than other logarithms. So we kind of get tired of writing the base every single time. So if you see no base written, as is the, right below it, it auto, automatically means it's a base 10 logarithm. So this we call the log base 10 of x. Everybody in the world knows that if there's nothing there, it's automatically an x. Just like if you said, well, what kind of a root is that? Well, everybody in the, know, in the world knows that's a square root. There's really a little two here. We just don't write that two, right? Because everybody already knows it. So nothing written, automatically assumed to be base 10. The natural logarithm is a log with a base of e. Do you remember how big e is? e is about 2.718. That's where we left off in our last unit. It is also referred to often as the natural number and named after Leonard Euler. And the natural log is the inverse of that log. It's ln, some people think it's an i because it looks like an i, but it's not. It's ln, which stands for the logarithm that is natural, based on the natural number. And it is the same thing as saying log base e of x. Now you might go, why is that so important? Um, well, they each have reasons for being really important. Base 10 logarithms are really important because we live in a base 10 number system. What that means, by the way, is if I had a number like 1,234, wow, I don't know why I wrote that, 1,234, each of these numbers represents a power of 10 or a placeholder of 10. Four is the 10 to the zero power, which is like one, so it's four times one. Three is the tens digit, that's 10 to the first power. Two is the hundreds digit, that's 10 to the second power. And one is the thousands digit, that's one, uh, 10 to the third power. So these are, that's the kind of number system that we work in. Logarithms with a base of E are used often when we talk about continual growth. You might remember that in our last lesson, we talked a lot about Y equals E to the X. Well, the inverse of that, of course, is log base E of X. And things that grow continuously, we want to use base E logarithms for those. Today, it's not about that. Today is all about just getting really comfortable with logarithms and just learning how to go back and forth between them. We're not going to do a lot with using them today because we first have to kind of be familiar with them and then we'll go um, in that direction. So express each in exponential form. So I have four problems here. They are all written as logarithms right now. I want to write them in exponential form. So the first thing you have to know is what's the base? Well, this little tiny number right here, that is called the base of the logarithm. It is also called the base when you write it in exponential form. So if you come back to the top up here, see this, and I'm gonna make it a little bigger so you can see it better. I'm gonna try to make it bigger. Apparently it's not gonna let me. Oh, there it is. All right, see this little base right here, this little b? That's called the base of the logarithm. That b is the same b that you have here, which is written as a base in exponential form. So for this first example, when I say log base two of 16 equals four, the base is two. Next on our list, why do we even have logarithms? We have logarithms so that we can solve for exponents. So if you look in log form, the thing that becomes the exponent is the y. Notice that that's the exponent. It is what is solved for. So in this case, what's the exponent gonna be? It's gonna be a four. The whole reason we have logarithms is to solve for exponent. That one's solved for the exponent, which means four is the exponent and that's gonna equal 16. Two to the fourth power is 16. In the next one, would you write down what you think the base is? I hope you wrote A. Then the next thing would be, what's the exponent? Well, remember logarithms, their whole purpose is to solve for an exponent. So whatever this is solved for is the exponent. In this case, that's a W. And then the leftover number, that's what goes here. Now, as you meet, move into the next two examples, you'll see in the next one, you don't even see a base there. There's nothing written. That doesn't mean there's nothing there. It is, we just don't write it. We get lazy, because this is a super popular one. Everybody knows it's a 10. And so I'll write this as 10 to the power of, well, what's the logarithm for? To solve for an exponent. So what's the exponent have to be? Whatever the log is solved for, in this case, 5w, and that's gonna equal four. Final problem says ln. I think as I'm learning to be more comfortable with natural logarithms, I sometimes will write this as the log base e just to get kind of used to that. And then I would say, well, the base here has to be e. 
remember that's just a number, logarithms, their whole reason for existing is so that you can solve for an exponent. That means c has to be the exponent equals r. All right, so that is how we go from log form to exponential form. In the next set of problems, we're going to do the reverse. So now I'm going to go from exponential form to log form. And to do that, what you're going to do for all of them is you're going to write down the word log, first of all. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to figure out what the base is. So you look at it in exponential form and you say, well, what's the base here? Whatever has an exponent on it, that's what we call the base. So the base here is a 2. Now be careful, please. When you write that 2, it is a subscript. And what that means is that it's smaller than the other letters and below the line. All right, so it's log base 2 of uh, the next number. Um, and that's going to equal the exponent. So what's the exponent equal to? Because remember what logs are for. They are to solve for an exponent. The exponent here is 5. And so then the 32 goes in here. And when you read that, you read log base 2 of 32 equals 5. Now some people will say the log of 32 base 2 equals 5. Either way is fine. All right, second example. Write down the word log. What's the base? Well, whatever has an exponent is what we call the base. In this case, that's an A. Logarithms are four exponents, so it's going to solve for the exponent. The exponent here is that fancy typewriter G. And then we would write K. So you would read that as the log base A of K equals G. Or if you wanted, you could say the log of K equals G. I'm going to hit the pause button now, guys, and I'd like you to try the next two on your own. Go ahead and do that now, please. All right, so here did you, how did you go? I would write this as log base 10 of D equals R. Did you do the same? Did you maybe write log of D equals R? Is that acceptable? And the answer is... Absolutely, it's acceptable. You can write the 10 or not write the 10. It doesn't make any difference. Without it there, everybody in the world knows it's there, even if you don't write it. For the last example, hopefully you did this. Log base E of W equals H. Or, if you prefer, you could say LN of W equals H. Either way is fine. It doesn't make any difference. Again, we're just building our comfort level with going back and forth between our two different forms. All right, let's move on to our next page. In the next page, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of equations that say log, and it says to find each without a calculator. Now, before we actually do that, let me just mention that logarithm is an operation and results in a value when you do a logarithm. Very much like if I said to you, what's the square root of 4? You would say, well, that's just 2. Square root is an operation, and it results in a number. Log is the same thing. And log, when you do log, you are really looking for an exponent. An exponent on what, you ask? I'd say an exponent on the base. So in looking at that first example, what I am thinking is I want to know what power on the base, the base here is a 5, so what power on 5 results in 25? Now hopefully you would look at that and say, well that's just 2. But if you didn't know, and you won't always just know right away, you might be thinking like this. So I'm going to do a little thought bubbles here. These are my thought bubbles. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking 5 to some exponent equals 25. And my question is, what's the exponent? And of course that exponent is 2. Let's try that with the next one. The base is 2. 2 to some power. Remember logarithms? We're just going to tell us what that power is. 2 to what power is 16? Now, it says without a calculator. That makes an assumption here that we can do that without a calculator, and I think we can. Let's try it. Is it, is it 2 to the first power? Well, 2 to the first power is, one, uh, is 2. That's not it. 2 to the second power is 4. That's not it. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. That's not it. 2 to the 4th power is 16. That's the one we want. It is 2 to the 4th power, so this one is 4. All right, would you please try the next one on your own? Did you remember what the base is? 
Oh, I hope so, because nothing's there. Everybody knows, all the cool kids do anyway, that it's a 10. So 10 to some power is 100, and hopefully you wrote that as an answer of 2. Now, sometimes they get a little bit trickier, and our next one's a little bit tricky. And in order to be able to answer what that next one is, we're going to have to remember some of our properties of exponents. Um, one of the properties that we're going to need to know in this case is this one. When you have a to the 1 over n power, that means the same thing as the nth root of a. Do you remember learning that just a few weeks ago? And I'm going to use that one right here. So when I see it as a square root of 5, I'm going to actually use it backwards. And I am thinking like this. 5 to some power is the square root of 5. And then I'm thinking, well, I know that the square root of 5 is the same thing as 5 to the 1 half power. The question is, what's the power? Well, the power is, of course, 1 half. When you see radicals, you should be thinking about that property. Uh, you'll see that again, oh, let's jump way down here when it says log base 7 of the fifth root of the square root, uh, the fifth root of 7, you'll use that same property there. All right now, here's another property that we're going to need. So I'm going to get off to the side here. Let me scribble this one out of the way. There's another property that involves fractions, and you might remember this. A to a negative power is the same thing as 1 over A to that same power but positive. We're going to use that one today as well. Again, we're going to use it backwards, though. When you see a fraction, as you do in the next two examples, you're going to be thinking about that as written um, without the fraction. So when I look at this number um, 2 on this line, I'll say 6 to a power is 1 over 6. And I remember that 6 to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over 6 to the first. So what's the power? That's negative 1. All right, well, let's see if we can't do that same thing with our next one. 3 to what power is 1 over 27? Well, 27 is a power of 3. It's 3 to the third power. So that means that this would have to be 3 to the negative third power. Thinking about that property, that property says take that, that base, put it in the bottom, make the exponent positive. So 3 to the negative 3 is 1 over 27. I'm just using it backwards today. So what's the power? It's negative 3. All right, now the next couple of questions are a little bit different. Um, I want you to take a shot at those. Actually, would you do the next four problems on your own? I'm going to give this a pause, and uh, we'll come back and check in in just a minute and see how you do. So the next four questions, go ahead and do that now. All right, let's see how you did, guys. I'm going to switch color here so we can read it. Um, so looking at this next one, it says ln, and of course everybody knows that ln is log base e. So if I write this as log base e of e to the fifth, and I'm thinking about b the base, that's e, to the power, I don't know, is e to the fifth, I think it becomes real apparent that the answer is 5. Did you get 5? Good for you. Now the next two are a little tricky. I wonder how you did. Let's try it. 4 to what power, because remember when you say logarithm, you're talking about power, it's going to give you 1. And you might look at that and go, well, that's not a power of 4. Well, it is. Remember, 4 to the first is 4, and 4 to the second is 16. Well, if you went backwards, 4 to the second is 16, 4 to the first is 4, 4 to the 0 is, anything to the 0 is, 1. Sorry, is, is anything to the 0 is 1. That means the power, of course, is 0. Man, I love it when I make mistakes. Super fun. Um, that's called sarcasm, people. LN1, that's the next one we have. So I'm thinking e to what power is 1? Gosh, I just said it a second ago. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so this is also going to be a 0. All right, now we talked a little bit ago about this log base 7. I, I asked you to do that one on your own, and I, I bet you got that one, no problem. 7 to what power is the fifth root of 7, and we remember that property that I wrote it up here, and I said that when you have a radical, you can write it with an exponent. We know that from our last unit. So this would be 7 to the 1 fifth power. So what's the power? It's 1 fifth. Now the last two, I didn't have you do those last two because they're a little bit tricky, and I kind of wanted to talk through those with you. In example number 
whatever, the second to the last one here, we have this decimal, and it is a base 10, but you might not recognize that as a power of 10. It is. It is a power of 10. So here's what I would want you to think about. If I said to you, what's 0.1? You'd say, well, that's just the same as a 10th. In fact, when you were in about fifth grade and learning about fractions and decimals and converting back and forth, your teacher probably didn't even allow you to say 0.1 like we say now, we get lazy. She probably or he probably said it was 1 tenth. 0 0.01 is technically 1 over 100. And 0 0.001 is 1 over 1,000. And that's what we have here. So this one is the log base 10 of 1 over 1,000. And because it's a fraction, and I'm thinking about exponents, I'm thinking 10 to what power is 1 over 1,000? Well, 1,000 is 10 to the third power, and so this would be 10 to the negative third power. And then I'd say, so what's the power? Of course, that's what I'm looking for. And the answer is negative 3. All right, last one. Are you ready for it? Here it goes. Last one. Log base 3 of negative 9. So I'm thinking 3 to what power is negative 9? Now some people might go, huh, I think it's like a third or like a negative 2. Well, it's not a negative 2 because 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 9. That's not the same as a negative 9. So what is it? Huh, well, here's what I want you to think about. If you were to graph y equals 3 to the x, that's exponential growth, and it looks like this. In thinking about this, does this thing, this graph that I've just drawn, does it ever become negative? And the answer is no. In fact, there's a horizontal asymptote out there. That thing's never going to be negative. So does log base 3 of negative 9 even exist? And the answer is no. It is undefined. In fact, you can never take the logarithm of a negative number. Never. So... This one does not have an answer. Oh, that was really tricky, kind of mean, but there it is. All right, now we're going to go on to the next one. It asks us to do some solving. It says solve each equation below. So to solve these equations, um, take a look at, they're all logarithm equations, but all of them, the x is sort of buried within that equation. So how do you get the x out of that equation? Well, you write it in its other form. So I'm going to switch problem number one here into exponential form. So what is the base of the logarithm? And that will be the base in exponential form. That is, of course, an x. What's the power going to be? Well, the power will be whatever the logarithm is equal to. That's a 3. And that's going to equal 1,006, or excuse me, 16,807. So how do you undo a third power? You take a third root. And you have options about how you type that on your calculator. You can type it with a one-third power, which is typically what I do because I don't have to go into any menus to do it. Or you can go into the math menu and select the third root. So you type it however you want. I'm doing the same. And you know how I'm doing it, right? Oops, but then I did it wrong. <laughs> so funny. Love it when I make mistakes. I hit 33 instead of 3. All right, I ended up with a value of about 25.62 if I run to hundreds. Do you agree with that? I hope so. All right, let's go on to the example two. In example two, I'm going to write that, again, in exponential form. To get that x, which is currently buried in the equation, unburied, to dig it out, we write it in exponential form. The base here, well, none's written, so automatically it's a 10. And then the power, that's what logs are equal to. And that's going to equal whatever number is left. In this case, that's an x. And that's kind of nice because I don't have to do any solving here. This one is solved for x. I could say that's my answer, or I could type it in. I'm going to type it in. So 10 to the negative 2.1 is about 0 0.0079. I went a little farther than... Um, the hundreds digit because it's such a tiny number. All right, last one. In our last example on this page, it says ln 2x minus 1 equals 3. It's kind of like the last one I just did, only it's not base 10 this time, it's base e. So e 
to what power? The third equals 2x minus 1. I'm going to go to my calculator on that e to the third right now. So I'll go second ln, that's the e to the button. We use that in our last unit. I'm putting in that third and I get 20.0855 and a bunch more. That's equal to 2x minus 1. And then I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'm not even going to write that down. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and get an answer of, let's see if this works, 10.54 is about the value of x. All right, hopefully you're agreeing with me. Our big goal again today, remember, is just going back and forth between logs and exponents. Sometimes you want log forms, sometimes you want exponents. So far, we've done a whole lot more of going from log to exponential form. The other will happen as well, um, and we'll see more of that as we go. All right, we have one question left that we want to look at, and it's a word problem. There are lots of things that are written in logarithmic form um, on purpose, usually because the numbers that, that represent them are super tiny. And here's one example. The intensity of sound, called I, is measured in watts per centimeter squared. Its relative intensity is given by the more common unit, which is in decibels. Decibels are something that we're all really con uh, uh, familiar with. Um, the intensity of sound I, we're not as familiar with that. These are related by the equation decibel equals 10 log i plus 120. The reason why it's written in log form is because the i values are typically really tiny numbers. And by taking the log of them, we end up with numbers that make more sense or easier to compare. So here is an example. A typical clock radio alarm goes off with an intensity of 0 0.0001 watts per centimeter squared. How many decibels is that? Well, that's what this equation represents. So this number here, this is your I value. And what we want is the decibel value. So I'm going to go to that equation, and I'm going to write the decibel value dB is equal to 10 log I, which is 0 0.0001, and then plus 120. Now this actually is one that we could do on our calc or without a calculator because 0 0.0001 is a power of 10, um, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use the calculator to type this because most of the time it won't be like that. So grab your calculator and again, find that button that says log. That is a base 10 logarithm, which is exactly what this function is. And type 10 log. And then notice when you hit log button, you get left parentheses. You will have to put those uh, the right parentheses in after the one. So you write 0 0.0001, close the parentheses before you add the 120. Now I wrote it that way on purpose, and now I've typed it that way as well. And I get 80. So 80 decibels. That's a more familiar kind of number. It tells us something about how loud it is. A clock radio alarm, that's kind of the typical clock radio alarm, is at about 80 decibels. If I said, it's oh, it's up 0 0.0001 watts per centimeter squared, you'd go, huh? right? Okay, let's go backwards. A firecracker registers at 145 decibels. That is um, almost twice as much as your clock or radio, right? And we want the intensity of the sound. So in this case, the decibel level is 145, and I is what I want. So I'm going to go back to that equation way up here. I'm going to replace decibels with 145. I'm going to write 10 log i is the thing I don't know. I'm going to leave that as an i plus 120. And then I'm going to have to solve it. Now we're going to solve it first of all for the log of i and see where that takes us. And we'll do that beginning by subtracting 120 from both sides. Okay, 145 minus 120, that's 25. Next, because log i is being multiplied by 10, we'll divide it. That gives us 2.5 equals log i. And then I have to undo the log. And to undo the log, we write it in its other form. And remember, this is a base 10 logarithm. So I'm going to say 10 to the 2.5 power is i. And then I'm going to my calculator here. So 10 
to the 2.5 power is an intensity of 316.23. And let's throw some units on that. That would be watts per centimeters squared. And that takes us to the end of our lesson today and an opportunity again for you to practice. Get really good at going back and forth because that's going to be like our big deal. If we know that, then we can do a whole lot of other things with logarithms and we're going to. All right. Good luck with this, everybody. We'll see you next time.